Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel Learn to Speak Malay Like a Local. My name is Lisa and today I would like to share with you the differences between Dari and Daripada. Both of which mean from in English, but in Malay there are specific rules on when to use Dari and Daripada in a sentence. So if you're here just to find out what the differences are, in short, you can easily remember by associating dari with arah tempat masa, direction, location, and time. And for everything else, you use daripada. So for anyone who wants to delve further into the specific differences between these two, you can stay for longer because that's what the rest of the class is about. And I've been referring to this massive dictionary called Kamus Dewan Perdana which I got recently and there are eight definitions for each word the differences is, differences is, the differences are slight but um, hopefully the examples that I've provided will help you understand them better and disclaimer this entire dictionary is a hundred percent in Malay so the definitions that I'm giving you in English is my own translation. So if there's anything that is inaccurate or you know not really correct, somebody who knows better, please feel free to point it out and correct me. Uh, but this is what I've done to the best of my ability. So let's just get straight to it. The, we're, we're starting with Dari. So the very first definition for Dari given by the dictionary is to state or show a place or direction that someone or something starts moving, departing, appear from, or fall from, etc. An example of this is Cikgu Saniah bergegas keluar dari bilik guru untuk pergi ke kelas tambahan. Okay, Cikgu Saniah bergegas. Bergegas is to hurry, to be in a rush. Keluar dari bilik guru to exit from the teacher's room. So as you can see here, she is exiting from one location to another. Therefore, you use dari and not daripada. Untuk pergi ke kelas tambahan, to go to additional classes or additional lessons. The second example is, Kucing itu keluar dari bilik ayah. Cat came out of that room. So location-wise, right? The cat came out from the direction of that room. Therefore, dari. And the third example is Air jernih Sungai Berzaska mengalir dari Gunung Ganang di Pizzo Baroni. I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. Air jernih, the clean, clear waters, Sungai Berzaska, of the Berzaska River, mengalir. Mengalir is to flow, dari. So dari, because from the direction, right? Mengalir dari Gunung Ganang di Pizzo Baroni. Gunung is mountain. So, mountains is Gunung Ganang. Gunung Ganang is the plural of Gunung. Di Pizzo Baroni, which is in Switzerland, if you don't know. I've never been. Wait. I have been. I have been to Switzerland. It's just that I've never been to. I cannot remember the exact location of where this river is, but I would love to go there one day. Okay, let's go to the second definition, which is to state or show the starting or the beginning of a period of time. And I have two examples for this definition. The first one is, uh, the notes is going to be on that side, so I should scoot over to this side. Waktu operasi pasar harian di kawasan PKPB dilanjutkan dari pukul 10 pagi sehingga pukul 4 petang berbanding dengan 2 petang sebelum ini. Waktu operasi, the operation time, pasar harian, the daily market, I'm assuming it's the, the morning market where people sort of like, you know, buy and sell vegetables and fresh fresh food di kawasan PKPB PKPB stands for Perintah Kawalan Pergerakan Bersyarat which in English means Conditional Movement Control Order because of the coronavirus uh, acronym CMCO uh, dilanjutkan lengthened dari pukul 10 pagi from 10 in the morning sehingga pukul 4 petang 
until four o'clock in the evening or afternoon, whichever. Berbanding dengan compared with dua petang sebelum ini, two o'clock in the afternoon before this. So it's been extended by two hours before this. They close at 2 p.m. Now they are allowed to close at 4 p.m. So because it is talking about a period of time, right? From 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. So you use dari. Dari 10 pagi hingga 4 petang. Not dari pada. The second example is... Zaman Sengoku yang berlangsung dari tahun 1467 hingga 1615 dalam sejarah Jepun ialah zaman yang penuh dengan pertelingkahan politik, perang saudara dan pergolakan sosial. It's a long one. So, Zaman Sengoku, the Sengoku period yang berlangsung, that took place dari from tahun 1467 from year 1467 until year 1615 so because it is a period of time right from whatever year until whatever year dari whatever year hingga whatever year dalam sejarah Jepun in Japanese history ialah zaman yang penuh dengan pertelingkahan politik is a period that is full of political intrigue, perang saudara, civil war, dan pergolakan sosial, um, social upheaval. Okay, let's go to the third example, sorry, third definition. To state or show the starting point of a certain measured distance. An example, Lapangan terbang antarabangsa Kuala Lumpur terletak kira-kira 50 km dari ibu negara Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. So, the Kuala Lumpur International Airport is located about 50 km away from Malaysia's capital city, Kuala Lumpur. You use dari because you're showing the distance of a location from one place to another, not daripada. Definition number four, to state or show the starting point of an activity or movement or phenomenon. Kemasyhuran kumpulan BTS tersebar dari Korea Selatan sampai ke seluruh pelosok dunia. The fame of BTS group spread from South Korea to every corner of the world, seluruh pelosok dunia, to every nook and cranny of the world. Anyway, um, to the uninitiated, BTS is an extremely popular boy band right now uh, with fans all across the world. And they, BTS stands for, oh, if I get this wrong, their fans are going to murder me, Bangtan Sonyeon Dan. Bangtan Sonyeon Dan. So, oh god, Bangtan Sonyeondan. That's that's my best attempt. Correct me if I'm wrong, as always. And it means bulletproof Boy Scouts, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm I'm gonna stop there before I dig a bigger hole for myself. I do enjoy some of their songs. They're very catchy. Awesome group. Great. <laughs> Let's move on. Definition number five, to show or state or indicate the original place of someone or something. Three examples, saya berasal dari Kuala Lumpur. I come from Kuala Lumpur or I originate from Kuala Lumpur. Basically, uh, a place where you've lived forever, you were born there, you grew up there, so that's where you come from. Okay, dari. Second example, Warna hijau diperoleh dari gabungan warna dasar kuning dan biru. Again, warna hijau, the color green, diperoleh is obtained dari gabungan warna from the combination of the color dasar kuning dan biru. Warna dasar is a primary color, biru dan kuning, blue and yellow. Sorry, kuning dan biru, yellow and blue. Third example, 
Permaidani besar di ruang tamu rumah Anissa dibeli dari Iran. The massive carpet in uh, the living room of Anissa's house uh, was purchased from Iran. So, location. So, from Iran, dari Iran. Definition number six. To show or state one's perspective or opinion on something based on certain aspects. How many examples do I have? One. Okay. Kita perlu mengkaji masalah ini dari sudut pandangan orang tempatan. We have to research this problem from the point of view of the local people. Okay. Dari sudut pandangan. From the point of view. Not daripada... How many times have I said not daripada in this lesson? I'm going to stop. You guys already know. Definition number seven. To express the lowest value of a numerical range. Example of a sentence. Harga barang-barang yang dijual di kedai itu bermula dari lima ringgit hingga dua puluh ringgit. The price of the things sold in that store begins from 5 ringgit to 20 ringgit. Dari 5 ringgit hingga 20 ringgit. And the last definition, number 8, brings the meaning of sins in English. An example of a sentence, Dari dulu sampai sekarang, since before this or since back then until now. Dari dulu sampai sekarang, Kucing saya sentiasa di sisi saya. My cat is always by my side. From all the way back then until now. Yeah. So that's it for Dari. And beyond the application of all this, it's all Daripada. So let's get right to the eight definitions of Daripada. Hmm. I think is I'm referring to two different sources, so I think to avoid confusion, I'm just gonna um, give you the eight definitions and just be done with that. Should I? Okay, this is the other book that I'm referring to, which is um, at the Bahasa Day One, and basically the application for Daripada is applied to when you're talking about punca. Punca means the source of something, where something comes from. So, applicable when the source is human, animal, a thing, or something abstract. Abstract in Malay is mujarad. I just knew about that today. Mujarad. Abstract. Or you're talking about sumber. Sumber is resource. Or asal kejadian, the beginning of uh, an event or a phenomenon. And you also use it when you are trying to show the difference between something or when you're trying to make a comparison. Okay, that's it for the summary for Daripada. I will get into the definitions right now. Number one, to show the origin or source where something is obtained or received. So, the first example of a sentence is Ana menerima sepucuk surat daripada keluarganya di kampung. Ana, a person, menerima, received sepucuk surat. Sepucuk is a um, classifier. So, it's like a piece of letter. Sepucuk surat. Daripada, from, keluarganya di kampung her family in the village. So, because she received it from her family and her family are people, so you use daripada and not dari. The second example is, Ramai pelajar Malaysia di Universiti Antarabangsa mendapat biasiswa daripada kerajaan. Okay, daripada kerajaan. Many Malaysian students in international universities received scholarship from the government. So the government is a collection of people. We would say it's an organization. And people slash organization, you can use daripada because you receive it from people. But that was ages ago. Yeah, days of scholarship was, is long gone. 
Where is my grandma all over the place? Days of scholarship are long gone. Um, nowadays, you'd be lucky if you were to get a loan from the government. Nobody's got any money nowadays. Moving on to the second definition, to show the source or material used to create something. I'm so sorry if the definition sounds strange because it's my translation from the Malay dictionary. So, yeah. So basically, if you're trying to say that something is created from something, so uh, that from, you use daripada, right? Because you're talking about the source or the, the kind of material used to create something. Um, kain ini mahal kerana ia dibuat daripada benang sutera. Okay, kain ini mahal. This cloth is expensive kerana ia because it dibuat. It is uh, created, it is made daripada, from, benang sutera, silk threads. Sutera is silk, benang is thread. Definition number th there. Definition number three, to show the source of something or where something comes from. Okay, this sounds really, really similar to definition number two. But um, definition number two before this is talking about the material where something is made from. Where the material of which something is made of. Like, you know, pen is made of plastic and my glasses is made of hopefully some sort of metal because it's so freaking expensive. And number three, it is the source of something um, more abstract, I'm guessing. Uh, like this example, saya mendapat ilham untuk menulis lagu ini daripada pengalaman saya. Saya mendapat ilham, I got the inspiration, ilham is inspiration, untuk menulis, to write lagu ini, this song, daripada, from, pengalaman saya, my experience. Okay, so ilham is abstract because you cannot see it, there's no physical form, from, pengalaman. Yeah, I should be talking about pengalaman. Experience is abstract, so... <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. There are so many examples like, oh, God, I'm going crazy. I'm going to move on. Right, definition number four. To show difference or comparison. Example, computer ini lebih berat daripada computer itu. Ah, oh, one example that is simple. Amazing. Computer ini, this computer, lebih berat. It's heavier daripada computer itu. Compared to that computer. Comparison. Number five, to show a change or development in something or someone or anything. <laughs> this is a long example. Bank Negara Malaysia telah menurunkan kadar dasar semalaman sebanyak 125 mata asas kepada 1.75% daripada 3% sejak suku pertama tahun 2020. Again, Bank Negara Malaysia, Malaysia's Central Bank, we call them BNM here, telah menurunkan, they have reduced kadar dasar semalaman. That is Malay for OPR rate, which is overnight policy rate, which is the definitive rate that is used by all the banks in Malaysia to base their interest rates on be it loans or savings or you know for the banks to borrow from each other I'm talking too much about this and sebanyak as much as 125 125 mata asas mata asas is basis points or BPS or BIPs so they are one hundredth of a percent that is one bit kepada 1.75% 1.75% daripada 3% from 3%. So it is to show a change or development in something. So the Malaysian OPR rate changed from 3% to 1.75%. So you use daripada to show this change. Sejak, since, suku pertama tahun 2020, the first quarter of year 2020. Did I totally mess it up? I don't know. I'll just roll with it. 
Okay, definition number six. Getting there to show elements of something or consequences that is rather avoided. Why is my English so weird here? Uh, to show elements of something or like uh, consequences that people would rather avoid. An example of a sentence. Ahmad berjaya melepaskan diri daripada belenggu kemiskinan. Ahmad, a name, berjaya succeeds melepaskan diri in freeing himself daripada from belenggu. Belenggu is um, something like shackles but a shackle is like a physical thing in English. Uh, in Malay, belenggu is something uh, figurative that is used to mean that something that ties you to something and stops you from enjoying freedom. Kemiskinan, poverty. So from so, belenggu kemiskinan is the shackles of poverty. It is to show that you are freeing yourself from elements of something unpleasant, which is poverty, right? So, he freed himself from daripada belenggu kemiskinan. Definition number seven. To show the source or the basis of an action or the conclusion. So, there's an action, there's, an, there's a conclusion. So, it, it is to show the source of it. Pelarian Syria itu terpaksa melarikan diri daripada konflik tanah air yang berterusan. So the Syrian refugee is forced to run away from the continuous conflict in their motherland, on in his or her motherland. This one person in this example. The action is to run away and the basis is the conflict the continuous conflict in the uh, the person's motherland right so you run away from it melarikan diri daripada conflict last one definition number eight to show the relevance between the sum of something out of a whole that's such a terrible definition in english so basically um to show that this person out of the whole like one out of ten or two out of thirty i'll give you an example hasil tinjauan kebangsaan kesihatan dan morbidity why is this in english wait chop 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 morbidity morbidity ah ni dia trend obesity it is morbidity okay Hasil tinjauan kebangsaan kesihatan dan morbiditi di Malaysia pada tahun 2019 mendapati 19.7% daripada orang dewasa termasuk dalam kategori obese. So, pronunciation obese or obese? I've heard some Malay people say obese. Let me check. O B E S Oh, besarnya buku ni. Oh, 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 over, over. Eh, obes. Okay, so the pronunciation is obes in Malay. Not obese, obes. Hasil tinjauan kebangsaan kesihatan dan morbiditi, which is uh, NHMS, National Health and Morbidity Survey in Malaysia, pada tahun 2019, in the year 2019, mendapati 19.7% found that 19.7% daripada orang dewasa of adults in Malaysia termasuk termasuk is like included it goes into dalam kategori obese is in the obese category so how do they categorize obesity your bmi is over 30 kilograms per meter squared Okay, so <laughs> that's it. How long was this video? Hmm. Hmm. 30 minutes. I'm sure I can bring it down to about 20 minutes. Okay, so uh, I hope after that long explanation did not confuse you even more about the difference between dari versus daripada. Again, let me recap. Dari, you use it when you're talking about location, direction, and time. Whereas Everything else you use daripada. If you have anything that you don't understand, please watch the entire video again. And if you still don't understand, 
please find a better teacher than I am. I think I've gone crazy today from doing all these notes and sentences. Anyway, despite all that, if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, and comment down below because engagement is love. How do Koreans do love thing? Sarang hey. I give you lots of sarang. Sarang. Did you know that in Malay, sarang means nest, like a bird nest. So every time Koreans say sarang hey, I'm, I would think of like love in a nest. Yeah, literally a nest. It's kind of funny, but kind of cute as well. Okay, I'm going to stop talking. Bye-bye. Good night. See you next time.